Dreamfall is a story about a girl who can go to sleep and wake up in another world. If only that would happen in real life, fairy does. Wish me luck. Oh, oh, I'm literally inside another world of the game, known in America as Out of This World. Cheerio! They say that every story has a beginning and an end. That might be true in most cases. Sometimes, however, the two are one and the same. And that's my cue to put on my wank hat. The Longest Journey, the precursor to this game, was a big, big favourite of mine. Recognised in many places for its sophisticated storyline, sophisticated characters, probably the best realised character in video game history, April Ryan. Beautifully voiced, beautifully written. So this game had a hell of a lot to live up to. The good news is that this game not only lives up to the reputation of the previous game, it marries the longest journey's literary sophistication with a hell of a lot of bravery. The kind of bravery that we don't normally see within video games. Oh, oh, question one, Robert, question one. Is this actually a game? Well, the truth of the matter is that interactivity is very low. I mean, there are some fighting bits, but they're absolutely terrible. Fortunately, most of them can be avoided. What there is in this game is a lot of dialogue and a lot of little fetch and carry tasks to reach the next scene in the story. It doesn't sound great when I'm talking about it, but that's because you don't know what the story is. Ragnar Tornquist has done it again. Zoe Castillo is a fantastic character, the main character of the game. She's, well, she's very sophisticated. I know it's predictable, but she's very, very sophisticated. She's got a lot of doubts. She hasn't got many ambitions. She's a lot like real people. And you just don't get real people in video games. It's still a shock when you come across a character who seems real in a game. It's a big, big shock to the system. It's the reason why The Longest Journey worked. And it's the reason why this works. Sure, there are little concessions to the video game genre like stealth sections. But they're few and far between. Most of this, as I said, is a story being told. And a story being extremely, extremely well told. I told you, don't talk to me like that. Fuck you! Well, here's a guy with a beard. I wonder what his accent's like, eh, folks? May the six grant me strength. Oh, surprise, surprise. He's Scottish. We've all got beards, folks. We've all got beards. Oh, boy. Ragnar Tornquist's world is populated with fantastic characters. Truth. Every single character is unique. Fantastic. And here's the thing. His minor characters are good enough to be the lead characters in most other people's games. Why is that? Why is that? It's because, I feel, Ragnar Tornquist is a writer. And you don't get many writers working in games. You don't get many writers writing stories, writing characters, writing dialogue. And we need more of them. Because, look at how much we enjoy a game like Silent Hill. Imagine how good that game would be if the dialogue was good. If the voice acting was good, if somebody cared that much to get all that stuff right, all the storytelling stuff right, just imagine how good that stuff would be. I want to get back to talking about the bravery of this game. Like a great book, like a great movie, Dreamfall leaves a lot of questions unanswered. And when questions are unanswered, you can really take a work into your heart because you can attach personal things to it. It can mean something to you. And that's Ragnar Tornquist's gift. He can create characters and worlds and stories that mean something to you. That's what Dreamfall is. What? And I think it's essential. They say that every story has a beginning and an end. That might be true in most cases. Sometimes, however, the two are one and the same. <laughs> 